episode 123. Are you ready to take your eBay business to the next level? Then hold on, because Ron and Ali are going to take you into the fast lane. With the latest tips and insights from some of the biggest and most successful sellers, here on the So You Want to Sell on eBay podcast. Welcome once again to another episode of So You Want to Sell on eBay. I'm Ron LeBeau. And I'm Ali Young. Hey, everyone. We have with us again, Jason T. Smith. He was on with us episode 46. If you missed that one, check it out. But Jason's with us tonight again. Hey, Jason, how you doing, buddy? I'm great. What's happening, guys? Hey, uh, what what number is this going to be? How many have you had since? Well, we know that you're a simplistic person, so this is number one, two, three. Yes. Nice. All right, cool. I like Jeez, it. Has it been yeah. that long? I mean, I, that's, I feel like that's years. It's been that long. Well, Ali, we had you Ali don't act like that, because I kept t- saying we need to get Jason back on the show, and you go, gosh, Ron, I don't know. Remember 46? <laughs> yeah, remember, you, you remember know, so that episode? With Jason, remember when he, remember anything... when he took his pants off and ran around? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, right. That right. was a good episode. I, I like that one. So we're... <laughs> We're not going to let this episode go astray here. So since beginning of eBay in the 90s, Jason's mission has been to educate and train other thrifters on how to become self-sufficient and ind- independent by finding and flipping deals. He can help you find treasures in what you, what others may think is discardable. So Jason, tell us about this, man. I mean, you know, you've been doing this for a while now, and I know that you and I uh, know each other personally, if you're in conferences and things like that, but tell us a little bit about that thrifting thing, because there, there's several ways that people can source materials and, and stuff to sell on eBay, but your way is thrifting. And tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. You know, my, my way is thrifting for really, it, it for my life, the sole reason of, I find myself a modern day pirate because, you know, if, if, if you do <laughs> FBA, if you're doing wholesale, if you're ordering a thousand widgets, you just get a thousand widgets. And although I have friends that make a lot more money uh, doing that kind of thing, I walked ASD uh, one time with Chris Green, and I hated every moment of it. I'm like, I never want to do this because I never know when I'm going to turn a corner and there's going to be a holy grail and the skies will open up and the angels will sing. And, <laughs> yep. uh-huh. That's it. But when, you, when you're doing wholesale and FBA, which, you know, it, it, it's a great business model. If you have the gumption for it, you can make a lot more money than I make. But you know what? I enjoy every single day because not only do I do it, I hunt for those treasures. I teach others how to do it, too. So I get joy from watching them go, oh, I found it. <laughs> That's sold it. it. They made a lot of money. No, you know what? That's awesome because there's really – I mean there's two – Two kind of, you know, main schools of thought with with selling on eBay and even Amazon. But, you know, you know, thrifting like you do or wholesale or or online uh, arbitrage, um, you know, but it's one or the other. And then, you know, some people say you got to niche down and you say if I say if I can sell a Frisbee for five bucks and make a profit on it or sell a tiki mug for 200 bucks and make a profit, you'll do that. Right. So. I kind of like that style because, you know, you never know what is valuable. You never know what you're going to come across if somebody decided to discard, you know, at the Goodwill or, or some other thrift store or a garage sale. And then you pick it up. And like you said, I mean, once you start to realize the value of these things mm. and realize you're going to get this thing for 50 cents and you can turn around and sell it for 20 <laughs> yeah. bucks or 200 bucks, you know, I don't know how you control that emotion. You know, it's, you got to have a poker face and you do live in <laughs> Vegas. So yeah. maybe, that, maybe that comes into play. You know, it's uh, I got my folks doing it, too. And so it it was one of those things where uh, this was probably probably going on about seven years now, six years. My folks said they want to sell on eBay. They're both getting ready to retire at the time. And I'm just like, man, mom still has a problem FaceTiming. Do I really want (laughs) to do I really want to go down this rabbit hole? Because I was afraid not that I don't love my parents and I wouldn't. Of course, I would help them. But I was afraid the phone would ring every three seconds. How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you? Yep. And, but <laughs> I got know that one. one. And for the most part, I never get that call. And I was so shocked, amazed, surprised, and happy. And they started killing it on eBay. And that's when I realized there was also a segment of the population that no one was talking to, which was the senior thrifter and seller. Mm. And I say senior, my folks are both now 75. Or I mean, my dad's going to be 75 next month, my mom in a couple months. But... Mom and I started doing a, a show called Selling Past Your Expiration Date, being thrifty over 50. And, you know, people of all ages tune in. But what I do once a week is I take a subject like how to scan with using your phone or how to 
map out your travels to hit all the thrift stores. Something kind of simplistic, but some of the senior sellers don't get it. And so I go really slow. I, nice. I figured out to, you know, push start, you know, <laughs> corner, a lot of times. When, corner. <laughs> yeah. When we all talk about things, we do it. We know it. We don't have to start with a start. So. I, I really got enjoyment for that, and I, I started to see all these seniors. Now, some are doing it because they don't have enough in retirement. Some right. are doing it um, uh, for extra money. That's what my folks are. They, they actually did very well getting ready for retirement. So their, their eBay business is their fun money, and they're like teenagers just <laughs> rolling around the country with their friends, and you know they, yeah. and they, and they, don't, they don't work full-time at it. They work part-time, and, and they're doing like – I don't know, fifteen hundred, two thousand bucks a month. Nice. Beautiful. Well, let me ask you this, because if I remember correctly, and I'm going back to episode forty six from memory here, so if I'm wrong, tell me. But didn't your mom and your grandma kind of get you into all this with uh, garage sales? Yeah, you know, they've always liked garage sales. And here I'll tell you a funny story. Uh one I don't think I've ever shared anywhere. So news nice. breaking here. I mean dun, 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 it's dun. not that important, but nobody's but, uh, listening anyhow, Jason, yeah. so just go ahead. <laughs> But yeah, so they started taking me when I was six to flea markets and all and it was, you know, back then we're talking 1977. So back then there wasn't cool stuff at flea markets like nowadays. We're all looking for the the mid-century modern and the, and the stuff like that. Back then, it, and, and I grew up in the country. So back then it was butter churners. It was old uh, grinding stones. No. It was just crappy antiques that a kid in, in at the birth of Star Wars really didn't care about. But what I did care about I was always a talkative kid and I always talked to adults. And so I would wander away from my mom, and my grandmother, and they would find me talking to vendors. Hey, why are you selling this? What are you selling? Why are you doing that? Oh, my so God. I didn't care about their stuff so much, but I did care about I thought it was just I was I was in awe. And then by the time I was um, 11, I was a dual income 11 year old. I had two jobs at 11. <laughs> nice. Wow. <laughs> I, I've been hustling my whole life, so I had yes. a paper route. We had, we had our road was about a mile and a half long, huge hill, and I would pedal my little huffy bike every day and deliver the papers. And my grandparents owned a pizza shop, so I would uh, clean dishes and pans for money. And so when we would go to community garage sales and stuff like that, I always had the fattest wallet of any eleven year old because I was <laughs> earning from two two ways. Nice. And, uh, so that's what, you know, and, and at that time is when I really started to realize that buying used stuff, you could buy four times as much used stuff as you could new stuff. Mm. And I always want more stuff than new stuff. Mm. And oh, that's still, awesome. Wait. So you, you got, you got a taste of what it was like to be an entrepreneur early on, man. And so, you, you know, I'm sure you probably have never at any great length of time worked for anybody else. Is that right? Well, no, I have, and I haven't, and that's, that's a good topic because, I had this misconceived notion in my brain that the only way that, you know, you get married, you know, we moved. The only way to do that is to have a real job. And I know we're on a mm. podcast. I am doing air He's quotes doing, right he, now. Yep, quotes. <laughs> and so although I sold online for many years, it was not my sole income. And I always went to a job where I punched a clock and I had some benefits. And I thought that's how you had to do it. I mean, I was always hustling to do extra but I always had a job and, and I had a career. I, I've had jobs. I've had careers. Um, and then about 10 years ago, I just had enough and I had an injury and I'm like, uh, screw this. I'm just going to do it on my own. And it, and it worked out. I mean, because here we are, you know, now I'm it, it, it's all I do. But, but it's not when I say it's all I do. I, I, I host three weekly YouTube shows. I sell on eBay, sell on Amazon. I teach others. I have Facebook groups. So it's all very a lot, but it's all in the same, you know, uh, genre but let me tell you a story about the garage sale and so i'm learning to drive and i live out in the country and i'm taking my four, i think you had to take four drivers classes back in the day huh. and after the first two the guy's like all right you, you you know what you're doing so you know whatever wherever you want to drive we'll drive so at one point i'm driving down this road and he goes so where does the cute blonde live and i said well, how'd you know? He goes, well, we're only down this stupid road because you probably got a girl down here. And I just guessed she was blonde. Apparently, I guessed right. <laughs> and I drove by her house. She wasn't around. And he goes, oh, hey, look, a garage sale. And I go, oh, you like garage sales? So the last two driving days, <laughs> we spent garage sale. Me and this, this big dude who was my driving instructor, we garage sale for two days. <laughs> so you were thrifting with your dri driving with truck, instructor, so Instead man. of really doing parallel parking and how to use your turn signal, yeah. we just went garage sale to garage sale. <laughs> Sweet, man. That's really nice, cool. Nice. 
Ron and Ali will be right back after this short break. Life is full of numbers. Our brains process literally hundreds of numbers and equations every hour of every day. When it comes to your business, give your brain a break as well as peace of mind that the numbers are figuring up as they should with MyCost Pro. MyCost Pro is an easy-to-use automated eBay bookkeeping program for Excel that imports sales data directly from your seller account. MyCost Pro automatically generates accounting and performance reports to show you your true bottom-line profit. You can even view and edit active listing details such as price and quantity and relist unsold items directly from MyCost Pro. All you need is Excel on your Windows PC. Take control of your business and free up those long nights of crunching the numbers. Visit MyCostPro.com for a 21-day no-obligation free trial using coupon code PODCAST exclusively for So You Want to Sell on eBay podcast listeners. eBay.com for the latest podcasts and all the information you need to get selling fast. So what about that? That's part? Awesome. So you, you you talked about you were working all those jobs and then you left ten years ago. So the part that you left, did you save up some money to get out of that, or did you just say like you you went insane one day? I'm out of here. I'm gonna go and get some cheap. <laughs> Well, I didn't go insane, but I, I, I had an I had an infection in my arm that that put me out of commission for a while, and I had a, I ended up having a lot of muscle tissue cut out of my arm, and I, I I was working at a job that I was unhappy with, and my wife kept telling me to quit, and when I got the infection, I was in the hospital for five days, and you know when you when you visit Vegas, what you want out of your hotel room is a view of the Strip. When you live in Vegas, what you want is a view of the Strip because your house is worth more. When you don't want to view the strip is when you are in the hospital having two surgeries, have muscle tissue cut out. They want you to pee in a bedpan. It's no, a mess. Usually. And my view out of my window was the entire strip. Oh, man. <laughs> and so here I am, five days of misery. Yeah. Uh, and my arm's all a mess. I almost lost my arm. I almost lost my life. And I'm looking at the strip. And although I can't see people, I can see the buildings. I am I'm thinking I am I'm laying here in the most misery of my life looking at the stretch of road that the people are having the most fun of their lives on right now. Mm. Right. And I am not in that. I am not in that mindset. I, I don't like life right now. Not to the point where I'm going to end it. But my work life made my life life miserable. And so I got out of that hospital and I, and I, I quit. I quit. I went right back to and now. Uh, like you said, did I save up? Now, luckily, I have a wife who has a good career. So. You know, some people, when they take that leap, they don't have that, yep. that extra. And I did. And she's got good benefits and everything else. So I could. But, you know, that first month I went back to eBay full time and I made more money sitting around here in my underwear than I did at a physical nice. laborious job. <laughs> and I'm like, what was I doing? This is wow. a job. And I finally it took an injury and almost losing my arm to break the mindset of you have to have a job. Mm, yeah, you know, that's pretty I incredible. It. I mean, I I hear that all the time. And, you know, we hear people all the time that are trying to, you know, start that business, get the eBay business to where they can quit the corporate job. You know, my story, um, you know, and I'm still, you know, struggling with that myself. But, you know, it is it is inspiring when I talk to people like yourself who, you know, and I, I tell my wife all the time, I don't mind working 60 hours a week, but I want it to be my 60 hours. If yeah. I wake up on a Wednesday and it's a beautiful day, I want to take my wife and kids to the park. Oh. I'll work late that night, but I want to be able to do it when I want to do it, you know, and and uh, life is too short to be miserable in, in, in your you know job or your income source, you know. So, yeah, you know, we're working on it here, but that's awesome. It's a really cool story. I love your story i love hearing it you hear you tell it all the time so it's really cool yeah look hey when you get to look we only get one chance at this ride i feel when you get to the end right before you keel over you better go shit yeah i did it all not in not not ah crap (laughs) and that's one of the things I, i teach people you know for a long time i just taught like the business part of it what to find how to set up spreadsheets how to do this and then i start thinking i'm like People kind of follow my escapades around the country and around the world now that I've become a world traveler. Uh, and, you know, yes, I can do it. I, I, I make a nice living. My wife makes a good living. But having fun doesn't mean you have to go to Europe for two weeks. Having fun can be taking your dog for a walk up in the mountains. Yep. And I started to teach people to have fun. And, and I was really surprised 
and, and a little bit saddened that there were so many people who never worked even an ounce of fun into their week. And it doesn't have to be big and nutty. It doesn't have to be five concerts in five days like I do. It doesn't have to be 16 <laughs> cocktails at Epcot Center last week in one day. But do something where you're away from work or you're away from the kids or whatever that is fun and enjoyable. Could be reading a book, could be taking a hike, could be going to movies, could be going on vacation. Yep. But so many people forget that part. And all I see is m the people around me, my friends and my colleagues, we're just getting older. And I see some of us having fun and I see some of us not having any fun. Yep. And, you know, life isn't just about having fun. But, man, you should have some relaxation. Definitely. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, some of the best weeks I've ever had are the weeks that I have something to look forward to. You know, I mean, so you're working Monday through Friday, you know, and if you know that you got Saturday, you got something really cool, fun that you're looking forward to. That'll help you get through that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday grind and Thursday to Friday. Um, but, yeah, you know, you got to have fun. I mean, seriously, it's it is too short. You know, we, we I think we take time for granted sometimes. We you know that we'll always be here and we'll always be in this health. I mean, you know, who knows? I mean, your health can go bad and and, uh, you know, the ride can be shortened. Um, but anyhow, yeah, it's it's awesome. You have to have to you have to have time to uh, to make fun. So since episode 46, thanks for checking, Ron, because uh, it's brilliant. What has been going on? I, I hear word on the street that there's some exciting stuff happening from your part of the world. Yeah, I, uh, you know, that, that 46, that's a long time ago. <laughs> it is. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling old. I'm feeling aged. I know. So it, it, since then, uh, my my main Facebook group has grown to, we're probably at 34 and a half thousand right now. Wow. That's just a little over two years old. And uh, it, it grows every day to the point where, it's one of those things, too. I used to, you know, when I first started Facebook groups, I felt that if people came to my group, I should always keep track of them and help them. And I felt I had to read every single thing that got put in the group. Well, oh, oh, no. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> when you got thirty four and a half thousand, you can't. But the good thing is the group really helps itself. Yeah. And I got, I have a great team of admins. I have all these women that, that help for the love of helping people. And so I, I thank them every day. But. There was a point, too, where I was like, OK, so what do I do next? And, you know, my wife would say, uh, you know, you should you should make so, you should be making more money based on the amount of knowledge that you put out to the world. Yeah. You know, the group's free. My, my three weekly YouTube shows are free. Uh, I, I'll throw class every once in a while and charge for that. But for the most part, most of my info is coming out free. And so with some, with the help of a friend, I put together a Facebook group, a second group, uh, an, an addendum to, to my thrifting board, kept it beach themed because, you know, I'm all about tiki and being at the beach and stuff. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kept it beach -themed and, and I, it's called the Secret Beach. And it's, it's, it's a subscription based group where we dive deeper into uh, subjects. So once a month, I do a webinar. Once a month, I have a guest do a webinar. I do bonus YouTube shows of my YouTube shows, obviously. Uh, how to videos. We're having our first cruise coming up in January. Nice. Wow. We had, had a huge party where I rented out a bar in July, the day after eBay open was over. I had this great uh, Vegas band called Franks and Deans. They only play Rat Pack era music, but they play <laughs> it punk versions. <laughs> really? <laughs> and have a top of Sula Hooper. So, you know, that's part of where I'm teaching people. I'm going more in depth. I'm teaching people, uh, better products to source, better ways to run their business, but then throwing them a party here. I, I've made cocktail glasses that they can have here. We're going on a cruise there. So that's all part of it. And so nice. I, 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 what excites me is people are like, Jay, I paid for the whole cruise out of eBay profits just from last week. And I'm like, ah, oh, that is so awesome. It, it, <laughs> it, you know, it, it, it's what fuels me to wake up every morning. My iPad sits right next to my bed. I flip it open. I want to see two things, what I've sold overnight and who has been successful based on the things they learned from me or from my group, you know? And so that, that's what excites me. And, you know, I, and I, and I try and bring a, a different, different look every month to my webinars. Uh, some of them just straight up motivational, some of them very specific about products and I'm teaching Tiki. I never, I had, you know, I'm the Tiki guy. Everyone knows me as a Tiki guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't mind. look, there are some people who hold all their cards close to their vest and don't want to teach their secrets. Right. I get right. it to a point, but I don't care. I don't care if there, if I teach so many people, I have nothing left to buy. I don't care because I'll do something else. I, it'll never happen. Yeah. But I like, I like teaching. And so I started teaching Tiki and people, 
and I kind of thought this was going to happen, but people got excited that not only did they learn it, some, some of them have got into the scene because once you, you know, Tiki is very much a scene. So once people start, you know, getting taught about the music and the cocktails and the bars and the travels, some people got so excited by it besides earning off of it. They're like, ah, I'm collecting now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So you've actually kind of, you know, become an enterprise in, in a small way. And here's what I, we always talk about, right? I don't think there's anyone, and you tell me if you know anybody differently, but I don't think anybody said, you know, I've got $3,000 or $4,000. I'm going to start an eBay business. I think most people start selling around their house or garage sales and, and take it to the levels that they take it to. But you've actually taken this to beyond that, right? So you've taken it to the level where you've made a good income off of eBay, and now you're you're getting these Facebook groups where you've got a, a lot, several 34,000 people, um, you know, paying attention to what you say and what you do and what other people's, you know, say and do in your group. And now the subscription base. So you've taken it like mm. to really pretty high levels, right? I don't know anybody that's done what you're doing, Jason. Yeah, um, it, and it's working well. And I wasn't sure, you know, my, my friend that's helping me, he even said, man, I wasn't sure if we were going to butt heads. I wasn't sure about any of this. And, you know, he goes, so far it's worked out. Like every month has been a good month. You know, like with anything, uh, people have come and gone, uh, but we have a good core and th they're loving it. And, uh, you know, beyond uh, having fun, I do. I did. I also found out there's a lot of people in our circles that, you know, do this job for a reason that I don't do it. And that reason is they're very shy. Yeah. And some are, are, are not apt to talk to people to go out in the world. And they figured, OK, I can sell online. Right. And. With some prodding and with some of me, uh, I've been kind of open and honest in the group beyond business because I realized back in February I was a fat pig and I needed to lose weight. So I said, this is we're going to make 2017 the year we get our shit together. And people all jumped in. Oh, Jay, I want to lose weight. I want I want to quit smoking. I want to start, start uh, you know, I want to drink less. I want to do all these things. And so all suddenly I became Oprah and I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> it's counselor. You're doing counseling <laughs> sessions. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean to, but if people are going to follow me, I take it very seriously. I take it. Uh, I take the weight of the world on my shoulders. And so I've got these people in this group that not only do they want to make their business better, they want to enjoy life, but they also want to fix what's wrong with them. Mm. And so I talk to a lot of the people who are very quiet, like, I've had people be in the same room as me, not know it till later on when they told me and they were too shy to come up and say hi. If you've ever seen me in any room, typically I'm just working the room, talking. To everybody. <laughs> Absolutely, man. There's not I, a stranger in the room when Jason's around. No, I mean, I look kind of scary and burly, but man, when I'm in a room at an event, it's all about the party and the fun and working the room. And and uh, I, I was just at Disney World last week and I got a message. Uh, I used to have a TV show called Thrift Hunters. I got a message on the Thrift Hunters fan page. Did I just see you going into Space Mountain? And I, <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. And I go, no, why don't you say hi? He goes, oh, I didn't want to bug you. I'm like, oh, my God, I would have loved to say hi. So if you see me anymore today, <laughs> please. Yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, I was on TV for two seasons. I'm not a huge TV star, but people do recognize me. And when I, were, when I lived in L.A., I worked at Tower Records. And I used to come home because I help celebrities every day because this is way before you could uh, download music, stream music and sell music online uh, to get it in your mailbox was very young. And so if you wanted music and you were a celebrity, you had to go down the tower. So every day I helped a different celebrity and I would come home and I would say things to my wife like, uh, if I ever become famous, I'm not going to be Elton John. I'm going to be Kathy Bates or I'm going to be Kevin <laughs> Smith because they were very sweet and nice to anyone that talked to them and then and Elton wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And and so I got just a little bit, just a tiny bit of fame and the fact that people smile just because they saw me on TV then they see me in person. I mean, that just warms my heart because I didn't do anything. I just I, that was a job. I filmed a TV show, that was a job, but the end result made people smile, they made people learn, and I love that. I love I I love every bit of it. That's the only reason I miss it is because I I miss those extra smiles. Well, I've got a confession to make, man. You know, when I tell people about our podcast show, they, you know, we tell them that, you know, we do say, you know, we uh, interview successful eBay sellers. Um, you're one of the people that I show. And, you know, I'll pull up a YouTube video of uh, thrift hunters, man. I say, yeah, see this guy here on TV? Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a buddy of mine. We, we call each other friend, you know. Yeah, so you're the most famous person oh, I know vomit. besides Ali, you know. Um, come on, he's I'll in come Thailand, on. so. I've I'm, I'm got the vomit bag here. <laughs> Brilliant. So, but it's, so you're actually now sort of, you've got all that knowledge, you've got all that experience of doing all this. 
So you sort of become this teacher to sort of help people who maybe are new, who are sort of struggling in this sort of world, and you sort of mentor them through this, do you? Yeah, and I would say the people's group, uh, some are new, but and that actually is going to bring me my, uh, my next project that I just kind of hatched about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, nowadays on Facebook groups, one of the newer things is when people ask to join the group, you can give them some questions they have to answer. Yeah, we, we, we all are. We all are in Facebook groups. You try and weed out the spammers before they even get in or the fake accounts. And so those and our questions are super duper easy. They are. Do you sell online? If so, what platforms and can you read the rules and abide by them? That's it. Super easy questions. But what I started to notice and I wasn't really paying attention when we first started using them was a lot of people are saying, hey, I have not sold online yet, but I want to learn. And I was told this is the group to come to. So here's all these new people in 2017 that have never done it. Yep. And people often ask me, they're like, Jay, how do you sign up? Well, when I signed up in 98, all you had to have was a pulse and an email. And that was it. <laughs> yeah. You had to have a bank guy. Yeah, they're nothing back then. And a keychain to sell or something. You yeah. Know? yeah. So, so starting in January, I'm going to do like a six-week program pretty much starting from here's how to sign up. So I'm going to start a brand new ID. I'm going to see what it takes to sign up because there's these people who need help. And I don't know what they're seeing because yeah. what I saw back then was not what they see now because there's all these limitations. You can only list five things. You can do this. You can do that. And so I'm going to do it from scratch. And then I'm going to build some training modules out of it because I see the need. I, I You know, I saw the need of talking to seniors and no one was doing it. And now I yep. see the need of these people who are like. And, and a lot of it's mothers who are maybe homeschooling or or have a lot of children. And they're like, I just don't have time for a job, but I think I can sell like my kids extra um, uh, clothes and stuff. Like today, a buddy of mine, he, uh, he lives in England. We became friends over him buying tiki mugs from me. We actually <laughs> hung out. And he sent me a picture of a tiki bowl that was shipped from within England. So 60 miles from his house. And they just wrapped it with newspaper and one of the one of the sides broke off. Oh, and there, that's another uneducated eBay seller that really hurts all of us who sell. So I feel and figure if I can train as many people as I possibly can, I am doing something good for the whole platform and all of right. us as sellers. And it's great that so you go back. It's great that you go back that far because it one, there's so many new rules since when you did it. And two, like in your days, and you know, feedback was very easy to get. I mean, I remember when you could sell like an ebook for one P. And you could create feedback that way. You could really generate. So there's a lot of struggles now that, you know, a lot more rules and stuff. So I think it's a great idea. Start from the beginning and test your exact theory that you have that made you successful and see if you can make it work now. Yeah. And start from the beginning and figure out where the hangups would come, too. Right. So not only just do the, you know, step by step, yep. but I know there's going to be hangups. And I, I don't know what they are because... I've been doing it. I've been selling for 18 years. Mm. So the hangups are long gone. I mean, the only hangups come now is when stuff changes. And the way I handle it is is like no one other. I don't ever change when it changes. I let it roll itself out. Nice. <laughs> so, so when prices change or when eBay says get rid of active content and every, I watch people like I've stayed up for three days, get rid of active content. You know what I did? Nothing. I waited till it was kind of too late now. And I, I saw my sales drag a little bit, and now I, I truly feel I should get the active content out. But what, <laughs> what happened was, when people freaked out a year ago and started cleaning it up, all the ones I have sold since then, I didn't have to clean up. They're gone now. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I got down to about 400 that sold active content, and I said to my assistant here, I'm going to show you how to do this. It's an easy job. You can get paid to sit at home and do this part of the job. Just clean up the active content for me. Yeah. And so that's <laughs> a, like when prices change on shipping, I don't go in and pre-change them because I'm going to I just figured it's quicker and easier and actually more cost effective to lose money for about a week till I figure it out. And then I'll change it. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's that, awesome. That's man. definitely a different way. Like, I've never heard that way. Yeah. I'd rather just lose money for a week and then get it and then get it and then change it. But it, it's kind of the question is, you know, are you really losing money? I mean, you know, your time's worth something, you know, I mean, so and I love I love what you're doing here, Jason, because, you know, with your uh, over 50 course and the six week course, it sounds right. to me like you're not making any assumptions. Right. So you're going to go in like a brand new user. And what would a brand new user who doesn't have any experience making no assumptions? What kind of problems or questions are they going to have? That's really cool, man. I think you it's know, right. so you're the. 
Got a problem, solution, and call to action all in one right there. Yeah, you must have awesome. patience, tolerance, acceptance. You must have them all, you know, because you're dealing with the, the, the like my mum. Oh, my mum phones like, where's the button? I can't find the button. It's there, mum. It's always there, mum. You know, it's like, you can feel it. It's coming, you know, so brilliant. We've got two minutes. What, what else is happening? Anything you're launching? What's the world needs to know? What's happening in Jason T. Smith's world? <laughs> Well, you know, if, if you're hearing this and you're interested in checking out the secret, uh, the secret beach is my subscription group. It uh, is not open at all times. It's only open a few times a year because what the way I feel it is, as we get new members in, they kind of gel with the old members and they became a they they become a family, a unit. So I don't want people just coming in all the time. So I open it a couple times a year. But if you just go to www.thesecretbeach.club in the club. <laughs> oh, ah, nice. uh, there is a sign up for an email we will let you know the next time it is open so uh that that's the big thing but you can come find me on the thrifting board uh that's my my big free group thirty four thousand. and youtube is jason t smith like i said i do three weekly shows uh one's called thrifty business selling past your expiration date being thrifty over 50 and thrift halls uh, every week when i go out thrifting i show what i found why i bought it what the brands you should be looking for what it should sell for, that kind of stuff. Jeez. Definitely. And wow. you can find me at a tiki bar all over the country because I, I plan all my travels around where the cool tiki bars well, wait, are. Wait, wait, wait. Not all over the country. The world. You just came back from Europe, my man. Yeah, we did 11 tiki bars in 12 days. Yeah, I mean, countries. so, you know, who knows? You may see Jason in a tiki bar somewhere in your area. Is, Heck, is, Yeah. Okay, so I'm not even going to – I have no clue what it is, but that doesn't matter because everyone who's listening does. It's just me who doesn't. So that, that, that's cool. So this this secret page thing, this is um, – anyone can join it, can they? Or, I mean – Oh, yeah. Yeah, so when in. it's open, anyone anyone can join. Okay, brilliant. And that's open twice a year. I feel like, you know, is there like a countdown no, time? It, it's open. It's probably open like five times a year. So okay. we just had it open a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and we'll probably have it open again in January. So nice. I just like to get the group to gel. The new you know, the new family members get to know each other. They see what we're doing as a group. And that way, you know, I, I felt that people were traipsing in every day back and forth. It would never right. gel. And, and I've seen that family unit grow. And I've seen these people become friends and meet each other and do things. And I really thoroughly enjoy that. And it was just my idea. And it's actually working like I thought it would. <laughs> That's really cool. I like that because you know what? You're not just opening a floodgate. You're letting, you know, a few, you know, some people in, let them. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that idea, actually. It's pretty cool. B build the relationship. So we'll post all the uh, interview from in our show notes page, which can be found at www.soyouwantosellonebay.com forward slash show notes. Everything Jason's just mentioned there, his YouTube, all of that stuff will be on there. So go check that out. We've also got a great resources page. So previous guests who come on the show tell us about their wonderful products that we put on there. So that's awesome. Jason, so this is 46, 123. So you need to be back in on about the 200 region. 200 episode you need to come back on. I, I'll be happy to come back anytime. Yeah, you'll you guys be want mental. You'll track. be like traveling the world doing these tiki things. You know, I, I think they're little small cars, but what do I know? Absolutely <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. As always, Jason, you're always fun to have on the show. From everyone here at So You Want to Sell on eBay, I'm Ali Young. And I'm Ron LeBeau. That's all for this episode of So You Want to Sell on eBay. Be sure to check out our next episode or any past episodes by going online to so you want to sell on eBay.com. Also, be sure to follow us on your favorite social media sites, facebook.com forward slash so you want to sell on eBay and Twitter at your eBay podcast. Thanks for listening. And until next time, happy selling. Have an idea for a topic or know someone who would like to be on the show? Let us know. Just go to www.soyouwantosellonebay.com forward slash interview. We look forward to hearing from you.